Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Chrissy. Today I'm sharing five different Valentine's Day crafts that are all very budget friendly and items you might even wanna keep yourself. Let's go ahead and dive into the first project. When my boys were born, a dear friend gave me this cute little wooden sign. Now my boys told me, mom, we're way too grown up for that sign. So I decided to upcycle it using a couple of coats of this white chalk paint. I will list all of the supplies down below for this entire video. After the paint had dried, I'd say it took about three coats, I used my Cricut machine to make a decal. If you don't have a Cricut, no problem, you can always use paint markers instead. I decided to create my own phrase that says, I love you more, because that's what my boys and I love saying to each other. All of the fonts that I used were free, and I'll put a link to the blog post where you can find fonts like this and over 20 others that you can download for free. After I weeded the vinyl, I used transfer tape to pick up the letters and then transfer them over to my wood block. Of course, if you don't have one of these old signs hanging around, you can usually find them at a craft store or the dollar store. I love how the red vinyl looks on this white background, but I wanted to add one last little detail, so I took some scrapbook paper that I picked up at Hobby Lobby, put a little Mod Podge on it, and added some stripe action all the way around my little wooden sign. To finish the decoupage, I added one more coat of Mod Podge over the paper, and I am loving the way this looks on my tiered tray this season. For this next Valentine's Day craft, we're going to be making a stained glass window cling. I have this kit that comes with some designs already and we're going to be using this gallery glass paint. So with this gallery glass letting, it's going to create kind of the outline of our stained glass. So you wanna make sure that you put a nice thick layer and let it dry completely before applying the next colors. I'm using a plastic sheet in between the design and where I'm placing this black outline, which is called the letting. So just make sure that you're using something clear that your design will show through, but also make sure that your design won't stick to it. I had some trouble getting my stained glass up from the plastic sheet, so I had to switch, and I'll show you in a minute what I ended up using. You can also use a toothpick to kind of clean up your lines if you make a few mistakes here and there. After about eight to 10 hours, you're ready to fill in your designs with whatever color you choose. Just make sure you're going all the way to the black outline, and then if there are any air bubbles, you can use a toothpick to kind of smooth things out. You can also get a little fancy by adding another color as an accent. On my clouds, I added some blue to make them look extra fluffy. Here you can see I had to do a little switcheroo and recreate my designs on a plastic cutting board instead of the other plastic sheet. This worked out a lot better. So again, be sure to test things before you do this craft completely. Once the paint has dried overnight, you're ready to pull it up. I find using a scraper tool is really helpful and then you're ready to hang your window clings. I decided to place mine on the back door window next to the desk that my boys use and I think it just brightens up our day a little bit. The nice thing about these is they are reusable. You can reposition them, you can store them on plastic for next year. I just am in love with these. For this next craft, you're gonna want a small glass spray bottle, some lavender essential oil, and then we're going to make our own lavender room spray. So you'll drop maybe 20 to 40 drops of essential oil, add some witch hazel, which is going to help the oil mix with water, and then we'll add some distilled water just to fill the jar up. As you can see, it's okay if you spill a little bit, it'll just make your room smell even better. Once you shake it up, you are ready to go with your lavender room spray, but I thought it needed a pretty label, so I have this label that I created, and I'll link to this down below as well, and I thought it just made it look a little more upscale, a little fancier, and now it's ready to give as a gift to a loved one. It's the perfect Valentine's Day gift idea. I wish you could smell how wonderful this is because it's so relaxing. This next project is one of my favorites. I made lavender heating pads several years ago when I first started my blog, and they've been one of my most popular posts. I really enjoy using these myself, so I thought I'd put a little different spin on it, and here's what I ended up with. For this craft, you'll want about a quarter yard of fabric scraps and this heart pattern that I'll link to below. You'll also want rice and dried lavender. 
Once you cut out your heart pattern, you can fold it in half and you're going to use this as the pattern to cut out a heart shape in each of the different fabric pieces. I like to clip mine with these handy dandy clips that I just got for Christmas and it helps secure it in place so you can get a nice heart shape. If you haven't guessed by now, we're making lavender sachets, so you'll want two hearts for every sachet you plan to make. If your hearts have wrinkles, feel free to iron them before you move on to the next step, though it's not necessary. I'm using liquid stitch to create a seam around the right side of my fabric, and you can see here I've placed pins so I don't put any glue there. So you wanna go all the way around, except leaving maybe about an inch and a half open. Then press the right sides of those hearts together and make sure it's sealed all the way around. This is a nice no-sew option. And you wanna, again, make sure that hole is open so that you can turn it right side out once it's dried. It takes about 30 minutes to dry. And this is what your heart will look like when you're done. Next, you're going to take some of that rice. It doesn't matter how much, just fill it slightly and then add a few of these dried lavender buds and continue going back and forth until your sachets are filled as much as you like. You want them to be somewhat flexible so that people can use this in a drawer or under a pillow. Then you're gonna seal it up with more liquid stitch and pin it or clip it in place so it can dry another 30 minutes. To make this look a little bit fancier, I decided to add this pretty lace ribbon that I think I picked up at Dollar Tree a year or two ago, and I just used the same liquid stitch to attach it to the front and back of my heart. I trimmed off the excess and then just kind of tucked it into the side of this heart. On the other heart, I decided to add this little rosette that I had from my other lavender heating pads and just attach that in the middle. The nice thing about making the lavender room spray is you can take some of that and spritz these lavender sachets when they start to lose their scent, which does happen over time. So that's just a nice option if you make both of those crafts. This last project is one of my favorites. I had such a fun time putting these cards together and I'll put a link to these free printables down in the description box below. I can't wait to give these cards to my twin boys on Valentine's Day and see their reaction. What's special about these cards is they are designed to be scratch off cards. So here I'm just using these little glitter hearts as a placeholder for where I will put my scratch off stickers. If you download these printables, you will have to cut them down to size. Keep in mind, you can always design your own card. This is just one example. The scratch off will work on any card you design. I'm tracing the shape of these glitter hearts that I got at Dollar Tree just because they were about the right size and I'm using a thick white cardstock here. You can use any color paper you like but I suggest white for these scratch off stickers. Then I'm cutting four hearts, two for each card and we'll begin the scratch off process in just a minute. Here's the fun part. You can put any little treat or whatever you want your scratch off sticker to say. These are for my boys. So I'm doing a mix of donut treat and a Sonic drink and favorite meal. You can come up with whatever you like. Once you've written your secret surprises, you'll take some duct tape or you can also use some self-sealing laminate sheets and you'll just want to attach your hearts to the back of the tape and fold it over so that it is essentially laminated on both sides. For this next step, you can either cut your hearts out individually or you can leave it in the tape strip and just paint over the whole thing. That actually might be easier in hindsight, so I'll leave that part up to you. I went ahead and cut out my hearts so that I'd be able to paint them individually. Next, you can take a metallic paint, silver or gold, or even a different color. And then you wanna grab some dish soap. It doesn't matter what brand. You're gonna add about two spoonfuls of the metallic paint to one spoon of the dish soap and then mix them together. This is gonna be our special magic solution to make our scratch off stickers. It took about three coats of paint to fully cover these hearts. Make sure you're waiting for the paint to completely dry in between coats and be very gentle. I suggest using a foam brush for this part. And once your paint has dried, you will be ready to attach your scratch off stickers. 
After my three coats of paint, I attached the little hearts to my cards using a double-sided roller here. And I love this for any type of scrapbooking or card making. It's permanent, so I know when my boys scratch off their little hearts, they're not gonna take the heart with them. And just to make sure this really works, let's take a penny and try this out. It definitely looks like a scratch off sticker that you would buy in a store. And I know my boys are gonna be really thrilled when they find this on Valentine's Day. This is one craft to keep in mind for Mother's Day or Father's Day too. If you're looking for more Valentine's Day craft ideas, be sure to check out these other videos that I'm gonna link over here. One is my Valentine gnomes, and it's a great tutorial for air dry clay if you've never worked with that. The other one is a simple Valentine's Day garland that you can make with felt and pom-poms. I hope you enjoy them, and I'll see you next time.